Welcome to episode 4 of my Toronto Maple Leafs franchise mode on NHL 19. A very disappointing season for us. We did not make the playoffs. I don't really know how that happened because our lines were pretty ridiculous to be honest. At least good enough to make the playoffs. So uh, I do want to take a look at who's grown. Ooh, um, attributes modified. Morgan Riley has grown to an 88 overall. That's pretty useful. Okay. I wasn't anticipating him growing that much. But he's up to like really damn good attributes in some of these categories. Very good puck skills and pretty good defensively. So I'm happy with that. That's really good stuff. Nylander is up to an 86 apparently. Uh, defensively he seems to be where he's grown a lot and speed. But that's fine. Whatever. I'm okay with it. Uh, Sperry Kapanen has also grown. Mana a tiny bit of growth. Other than that, not a massive amount. Now this is a very different screen to what I'm used to here. Current overall, let's go by that quick. So Tavares is still better than Matthews. That's okay for now. Uh, and then in the minors, we got a little bit of growth from Gautier, from Nielsen. Doesn't tell you their previous overall, which is, I suppose, quite good. Uh, Holmberg, don't really know that he's someone that we need to worry about. But if he keeps growing like that, then we can keep an eye on him. We're asking an up to a 67. I wish I could remember how good some of these guys were. Anybody with really good potential. Basically, what I'm looking for is who's our elite guy. Is he in the NHL system right now? It's, uh, come on, Lilligren, who apparently got no growth at all, but is 78 overall. That's slightly disappointing. Hopefully, we'll see something out of him. Um, and he'll end up being a very good NHL player for us pretty soon. That's the hope, anyway. So, we haven't seen the draft lottery yet, so we're going to go forward up to... Well, maybe we have, but I might have cancelled it by accident because I was just clicking buttons and something popped up and I skipped through it. So I may have got the draft the uh, thing already. We're also going to see the draft class before we get into it. <clears throat> oh man, my throat's killing me from shouting and all that and recording loads. I mean, obviously Galvan seems to be the guy. Uh, we're likely to be around around this sort of area. And it looks like there's some good guys here. I, I wish I knew more about Matthew Robertson. What do we know about Tommy Thorison? We know that he's playing an A-plus competition. 18 minutes a night, likely a two-way forward, but not 100% certain. Good goal scorer, good playmaker. Decent ratings all the way around. Uh, similar to TJ Oshie with maybe elite potential. He could be someone we definitely would like to pick up. Suzuki there as well. How about gems and busts? Oh, not rank. There you go. Gems and busts. Come on. What do we have? We have busts, no gems. Yeah, no gems we have listed. So interesting there. Let's review the retired players around the league. What do we have? Cullen went, Martin Irat, Derek Waugh, Chimera, Franzen, Martin Roosevelt. Nobody particularly um, dramatic. I don't think Brooks Orpic, according to Reddit, is the best player ever. Uh, let's go to goalies. No, nobody that I need to particularly mention. Let's go through then. Franzen. Jamera and Orpik are now scouts. That's cool. I really like that they've added that in. Not that it necessarily makes a massive difference, but pretty damn cool. Let's go into the draft then. I This is my first draft here, I, and I'm split on this. For videos, I think this might be worse in the draft, if that makes sense, because there's no moment of, I made a pick and, oh, wow, that's amazing. I know for a fact that now he's elite potential. What a great steal. It's all risky picks, or they're all... You're kind of picking blind in some ways. And, and also you can't go, oh, we missed out on a great player because we don't know in a lot of cases. So it's um, it's really good and much more realistic because you don't know when you pick someone out of the draft how good they're going to be. You also don't know how good other teams' players are going to be. In fact, I think they could go even further than that than they have and say that their potential, like their overall 
and what they're good at and all that stuff is available to you pretty early but their potential shouldn't become available to you for like three or four years probably until you're pretty sure what he's going to be that would be really cool where are we picking we're picking 14 okay that's all right i'm, I'm fine with it um uh, do we want to potentially move up is there a, a way we could do that is there a reason to do that i mean the reason is Chris Gallop is a grinder. I scouted him like four times. It just didn't get any information. I must have been using a bad scout or a scout who's not good in Russia. Um, so who would we be looking at? 14. We were looking at Poulan, Thorson, maybe Urkamps, potentially maybe Ty David. We're we looking at with Ty David, 60 points. Pretty good. That's not the right person. What just happened? Oh, hang on. Someone made their pick already. Did they? Yeah, they did. They picked Galvan already. That was weird. Okay, that's cool. That's really good. Because previously, if I go into any of these pre other screens, it pauses the draft. Doesn't do that now. It carries on, which confused the balls off me, but makes a lot more sense. So David or Myers could potentially be good picks, or Yarvanen, who are all snipers, or Stobitz. Um, so 60 points in a fairly weak league, but some good categories for what he is. Good shot, and he's quick. Similar to Theo Fleury, top six guy could be quite tempting, to be honest with you. Much better competition, but uh, and equally pretty good attributes. 18 years old, similar to Theo Fleury, very similar there. Uh, a plus competition again pretty good again pretty similar but lacks size similar to Theo Fleury apparently everyone is similar to Theo, Theo Fleury uh, he got 60 points as well but less goals number two is gone okay I'm gonna again I'm gonna check just make sure I know what I'm looking at with these guys so Stobitz is similar to Owen Nolan I'm looking at one of these three probably, and they're all very similar if I go around that area. Otherwise, I could go try and pick up Thorison or Poulan. They're reeling through these picks here. I'm missing any opportunity I wanted to move up. Uh, Tavainen went second. Krebs went third. Is there anyone I desperately want to move up for? Byram... Defensively, that could be helpful, but I don't really know that I want to do that. Capo Caco is a real person, I believe, right? So, Kirby Datch, I don't think he's quite there yet. Pretty good. Similar to Sean Couturier. I think I'm just going to go with whoever's available when we pick. So, let's go Sim to user pick. Suzuki, Chubasov, Tillit. All these guys went. Brzgalov went number seven. I'll be interested to see what he turns out at. But I think everyone that we kind of hope will be available is still available. So now it's a decision, really, between Thorson, who they rank 15, but they rank Dawes 14. But we don't know much about him, really. He looks fine. Similar to Thomas Vanek. I'm going to skip on Thorson. I'm really looking maybe Poulan, but... I don't think, I'm not going to pick Paul Lamb. So it's Thorison, who is potentially elite. Played a lot of games in a good league. Was a plus 15, that's good. Fairly decent attributes and maybe elite potential, but we don't know that he is elite potential. Urkamps, we know is top six. He did really well. He's okay, well-rounded, similar to Jakub Voracek, which is nice. But I think I'm going to pick one of these snipers. David, Myers, or Yarvanen. So let's analyze these stats a little bit. 60 points for David. And then Yarvanen and Myers played in A-plus leagues. So 60 there. A shooting. That's really good. Really helpful. A good release. Good offensive instincts. Okay. So an A for shooting. An A for shooting as well for Myers. B's and C's there, B minuses and B's and C's, good goal scorer, good release, good offensive instincts, Hector Myers, but he only got six points in an A plus league, where UC Yarvanen 
in fact i think in very similar numbers of games actually got 10 with six goals same number of assists six goals i think and is that less ice time just a little bit less ice time as well i think does like size bulk and reach though uh, how big is he 175 centimeters tall am i really gonna be that scout who goes for size 185 um i think i think i might go for david you know no do you know what i really think even though he's got some size issues um a minor shot yeah, I think there's too many issues with him. I, I think I'm going to go with David. Am I going to go with David? David, 23 seconds left. One of these two, David or Myers. Uh, I think I'm going to go because he's played in the men's league and played pretty well. I'm going to go with Myers. Let's take Myers as our pick. Potentially could have reached for some higher potential guy like an elite guy, uh, but it, it doesn't seem to necessarily be worth it. Let's have a look at the draft summary real quick. Is this the right page? It's not. What I want is the draft board. So what picks do we have? Uh, who do I have watching as well? I have Scrivens at 51, which I, I'm happy to pick him in our second uh, second round because he's medium elite. Almost certainly, so I think actually certainly. And then we also have a medium elite guy in the third round, Jared Williams. Not great, but DeAndre Scrivens is pretty good. So I'm going to imagine that he's available for us at, you know, with our second pick. So, oh, we don't have a second round pick. Okay. Do we have a goalie prospect at all? Not really, no. We have um, Anderson as our starter, and that's about it. So... We don't have a second round pick. We used it this year. So we could just wait for Williams, but I think Scrivens looks like he could be significantly better. The weaker competition is Williams playing in similar level of competition. I think that means we need to go for Scrivens here, which I'm fine with doing, but we do need to then move into the second round, most likely. He was predicted 50th, right? So if we want to go say maybe around the predators pick i'd be okay with that they want to get rid of it i should be fairly safe what do they want goalies matching the block none skaters matching the block you're gonna to have to go further down this list maybe to nobody really that i would want to give up i wouldn't mind it but really want to give up 76 or would I rather give up yeah I'll tell you what 76 and then like a seventh is not gonna do it but if we add in some player a goalie or a player or a skater sorry um, Scott I'll be fine with adding Scott in how about that rejected not really that interested in that how about skaters who just uh, tip that over the tip the balance over the edge there? I'm talking maybe yeah, Rassen and could be a one to throw in there. How about throw Gordiev in. I know that they're not that interested in these players, but that doesn't tip that over the edge. So how about if we throw in Rassenen? I, I don't mind giving up Rassenen. He's he's a decent prospect, but he's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, and then if I throw in a fourth, how about that? Rassen in a fourth. Not going to do that, is it? It's not going to get it done. How about the third then? Rejected. Quite close to fair value. Just throw in an extra goalie or an extra pick, something like that. Scott as a backup. That's fine by me. How about that? Accepted. There you go. So hopefully then we can pick up our boy. Uh, Dawes went there. I was about to say Nigel Dawes, but it's not. It's Nathan. Let's sim to the user pick. I don't know enough about the other guys who have gone. So, watch list. We still have Williams at uh, Scrivens, sorry, available. I think he's the pick. Good save percentage in his league. 
and uh, top end potential. There are some players here that could be good, like uh, maybe O'Brien. Reasonably, probably not going to be medium elite, but we are certain that Scrivens is, and we know that he had a good save percentage. Is he going to be amazing? No. Look, D minus reflexes, E, e puck controls, C minus athletic, but incredible drive to win so hopefully that means his his growth is better i think a project pick but very very much a good pick for us in the second round scrivens is our guy now we go draft board how many more picks do we actually have we have the fourth round pick and they recommend that we pick these guys here bukaj wouters i really like that it ticks down and the people make picks while you're preparing yourself it's really good um, I don't really know enough about these guys from that page to know what I'm looking at. Let's go to the draft class and sort by potential. I think we're most likely just going to miss out on our boy, whoever that was, the other one, Williams. Mutala, pretty sure is not that good. He might be pretty decent, but... I think we just take a risk on some of these guys later on. Someone like uh, an Immanen, maybe, or a Neiman. Then, yeah, we're just going to take a risk, and we're going to go with whatever we've got left, basically. Just pick with the picks we have, because I it, there's no one that I want to necessarily move up for. Let's take, in fact, sorry, let me just check that one more time, because I just realized I only went down to Elite, and there could be a really good top six guy available. Kind of only ever focused on the top end there. Is there no no there's no medium top six is confirmed, so these are slightly risky ones. There's a low top six confirmed who probably likely to go in the seventh round. He could be okay. No strengths. Confirmed no strengths. Yeah, he's uh, predicted to go in the NHL draft. Very weird. Let's go to make the pick. And we'll work out what we want to take with this one. Okay, we have 104 is kind of where we're at. I think Eli Kwong, sick name, and he's predicted about now. Otherwise, I could take Cole Stewart, who is not particularly good at scoring. And he's not particularly good at hockey. Uh, low top six, Zankara, Zankanaro. I think I'm going to take Kwong. Or who's who's our scouts ranked next? Bukaj. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to take any of these guys. Backman wouldn't be horrible. Havlet wouldn't be horrible. Mikhail Shostopolov could be okay. But I think... I could take another goalie. I think Kwong might be the guy. I don't know anything about this fella. He hasn't ranked quite a lot higher than his actual rank, though. Played in the Russian League this year. We don't know anything about him. It would be a risky one. Part of me wants to take Galiev, you know, because it would be such a complete blind shot in the dark. What about this guy? One goal, minus five. Not horrible. Uh, I think I'm going to take Kwong. It just seems to make the most sense. I'm going to take him. We don't know what he's going to be, but it thinks right now he's going to be pretty good, so why not take a risk on him? Later rounds, if you can take a, a, a shot in the dark at someone who could be great. Jakobsen is there taking my attention right now. My scouts have him ranked a bit lower, though, so... Maybe like a Kulikov could be interesting as a, again, just a wild shot in the dark. Ron Geibers, Geisbers, no points as a forward in the C minus competition. Not really interesting to me. How about you? No points, but A plus, A plus level of competition. Okay, what are we looking at in in terms of top potential players. Imanen, uh so sort of well off the board, but I think I, I think Stuart is probably gonna be the guy. 
or Jacobson? Is it going to be Jacobson or Stewart? Um, I, I think Jacobson's probably our, our guy here. Scouts have him ranked a lot higher. Wait, no, sorry. The Central Scouting has him ranked a lot higher. So, yeah, I mean, let's just take Jacobson. He could be good, could be absolute bum rubbish, but there's only one way to find out. That's to take the man. So let's do that. And then I think we've got one more pick. We're in round seven, so we'll go, if we need to, go well off the board to take the guy with the best potential. I don't mind just taking a complete wild swing at this point. And I guess that's imminent. Imminent or Zancaro, but Zancaro, it just says, like, no strengths. And that's concerning. And we know he's low, low top six, which is pretty good for that round. But I think Imminent as a... He could be awful, but he could be good. It's kind of tempting to me. His strengths are character and work ethic. He's like more of a playmaker, realistically, with a, a good teammate utilization. Those are good players to have as well. Players who bring other players into the game. Let's take him. Imminent in the seventh round. That's going to be our last pick. So I, I assume. 100% sure, yeah. There you go. Draft is over. We only make five picks, but I think Myers and Scrivens are pretty much dead on good picks. Kwong and Imminent are kind of are slightly wild swings. The players that could end up being pretty good. Jakobsen, again, could be basically anything. I think that's an okay draft based on that, but it's just too early to tell. It's not been that long so far, so I want like to make a bit of progress. Let's go to the resign phase. And see what we're dealing with here. Shouldn't be much because we've re-signed Matthews, Marner and Nylander to pretty juicy contracts. Uh, Skinner does not want to re-sign, neither does Gardner, which is slightly frustrating. Let's go all expiring. Let's go to unsigned first. I do actually think I'm going to sign Myers up. We don't know what he is, but I think it's worth signing him. How do we get information on these guys? How, how do we do that? I don't know how we gather that information because we don't sign them. We can't put them in the AHL. Do we... I didn't think about that. How, yeah, okay. I, I just didn't think how do I get that information. I think Myers is probably, probably going to be okay. Not going to get in the team this year, most likely, but an AHL potential guy. I'm fine with giving him some AHL time, so I'm going to sign him. Three-year deal at 925 grand. I'll put him into the uh, into the squad for the preseason to find out what he's going to be. The rest of them I'm not worried about signing right now. They've got a couple more years, really. So let's look at who wants to re-sign, who we can bring back in. On a Carrick. Uh, Seidenberg can walk. I'm not worried about him. He was brought in as a backup guy anyway. Let's go goalies. Picard doesn't want to re-sign Sparks. Cadam can walk. He's not going to make it on this team, unfortunately. Sparks is an AHL guy. One year, 800 grand. Kind of fine for me. I'm not worried about that. McElhaney is going to walk. He's, he's just too old for us at the moment. And then Picard would want one year at 1.3. I think that's fine. He doesn't want to re-sign this. That's often one year at 1.5. And let's go defenseman. And uh, Gardner, I think, is really necessary to sign because if you look at the roster right now, he's our third best defenseman behind Hamnick and Riley. We do really kind of need him. We've got, we've not actually got a lot of cap space left here. I just realised that I wasn't really thinking about cap space, but I obviously we re-signed the guys that were there. I think what that means is we're likely to go and get rid of Marlowe's contract as soon as we hit free agency. I think, let's go forwards. Who's the forwards we want to keep, right? Because Skinner be a second line guy or a first line guy, depending on, on your outlook. Um, so he could be important to keep, I think. But then so's Gardner. I think Gardner is, our defense is more of a pressing issue. So I think Gardner is the guy I'm going to try and go after. What was Carrick's contract like? 
1.3. We'll qualify Carrick. And what would he actually want to re-sign? Like 3 million. So yeah, he's not getting that. Gardner would want nearly all of our cap space. So let's have a look at what... Because Gardner walking would be annoying. I honestly thought I'd done a better job here of getting ourselves set. I thought we had so much money left over. And Skinner doesn't want to re-sign and wants 5 million. Skinner looks like he was uh, the worst decision ever now. Rental that just didn't pan out. We'll, we'll try and re-sign Gardner then, see what he will be willing to sign for. So four years at four. Let's just offer him what he wants, see what he says about that. Most likely he's going to say no. Um, yeah, where you, yeah, we need to get rid of Marlowe's contract. Rejected and rejected. Sparks accepted and uh, Myers accepted though. So yeah, I think I would rather try and sign Gardner than Picard. Pickard, however you say that, because he didn't offer that much to us. And how much space have we got here? 5.8. So, I mean, how much is he going to want? 4.5. That's a lot, isn't it? For an 83 overall defenseman, I might let him walk. I might let all those guys walk and try and use the money there. That 5.8 in free agency. Get rid of Marlowe and end up with 11. Is there going to be anyone worth it? Well, we really need a defenseman. We go to pending free agents. What are we looking at here? Sagan, who in real life obviously signed that new contract. Panarin. Any defenseman that we worth it. I mean, Chara for a year. Could be useful. Anton Strollman. Nate Schmidt could be pretty useful. What's he going to want? Uh, I'd okay, actually. He would be a decent replacement for Gardner. Myers as well, but nobody really much better than Gardner is wanting to sign. I think I'm going to go ahead and offer Gardner that deal, which I don't really want to do. Not happy about that at all, to be honest, but let's offer him that deal. At like, uh, I, th I think 5.25 5 is really what I'm willing to give him. Any more than that, we're going to tell him to kick rocks. And then we're going to go to free agency. Rejected. I think I just need to let those guys walk and then try and get rid of, of uh, Marlowe's contract. Because is that the only one that's really hideous, Marlowe's? I think it is. Let's go to contract values. Uh, main roster, yeah, Matthews, Marla, Hortons, ah, ah, I'm going to buy out Thornton at uh, Hortons contract, that would be 1.67767 a year, I'm fine with that, so we've bought that out, that gives us 8 million cap space already, and I do still think that we need to get rid of Marlo's contract, because past that, I mean, Nylander, Matthews, Marner's contract, Morgan Riley's contract is an absolute gem. Matthew's contract amazing. Tavares is massive, to be fair. Anderson's is pretty damn good. So where's the money going here? Maybe a Zaitsev might be someone that's costing us more than he's really worth for us. And for a long time as well. He's the outlier, I think. And so is uh, Jonsson, actually. I'm hoping he grows, though. I did offer him that deal, so I can't really complain. Anyone else that needs to go, I, I think then Marlow goes and Zaitsev likely goes because Zaitsev is not horrible at all. He did fine, but he's not worth it for someone who will likely not be on our top pairing. That makes me feel a little bit better about getting Gardner's contract in them. Uh, let's go to the ones who don't have a contract and offer one to Gardner. Okay, five point. I'll offer him five point four two five. That's the most he's willing he's going to get. I will then go ahead and release all these other guys who are not going to make it. I'm actually going to offer Josh Lievo a contract again because it's kind of a low cost, low risk two way contract, potentially for the fourth line. And Timoshov's going to get one more year. 
one more opportunity to prove that he can make it in the NHL level. Other than that, I think we're all set on those. And if Garner doesn't accept that, then he can just walk, to be honest. He, Lievo accepted, Gardner accepted. Okay, that's the most that I was ever going to offer Gardner. He accepted at the right time. Smart from him. Let's send to free agency. We know that we're going to need probably to trade Zaitsev. Uh, I might not do free agency in this episode, but I'll leave it on a cliffhanger and do free agency and a couple of trades maybe in the next one. And then set up the team for the next series. Let's just uh, see who's available in free agency. Jeff Skinner did not re-sign and people will hate that. Okay. Okay, free agency. We know Skinner's available. Is he going to be the best player there? No. Pavelski is available. He's 34, so that makes it tough for me to want to sign him. Duchesne is available, but... Hmm. Skinner is really the guy I would want to go after, but he actually wants significantly more here than he did before, and that's not really something I'm willing to do. What about goalies? Pecorine is available, but I'm not worried about any of those guys. Any potential guys I'll pick up at some point if I can. The, other, the option for defense, though, really is Myers, and I don't know that he's going to be worth it because his contract is basically he's a bit more than Zaitsev's and only a little bit better. So I'm not sure that's going to be worth it, to be honest with you. There are a few forwards available, though, that do look intriguing, like Heinen, Ritchie, Eriksson Ek, Burakovsky, uh, maybe Duclair. But they are all RFAs, except Duclair, who is not. And he could be quite tempting, actually. What did he put up last year? He put up 37 points. Not horrible. I, I might be interested in some of these guys, but... It's whether or not they're going to be worth the RFA money. I'm going to end that there. That's a bit of a weird spot to end it on. But I just sort of thought the resign phase, I'd done the big three contracts. They weren't going to be that difficult to deal to navigate through. It was a little bit more difficult than I'd anticipated, but uh, a bit more painful as well. I'm going to end that there. Let me know what you think I should do. But again, full disclosure, I probably will record this before the next one, sorry, before I have a chance to see any comments. But likely Marlow might go and if, uh, otherwise if we don't if we need to move him anyway if not it's not really worth it unless I can get something good back for him because he only has that one year left I hope you enjoyed that if you did consider giving it a like uh, maybe subscribe to this channel potentially share this video with someone you know or you don't know or anything like that uh, maybe follow me on Twitter I'm trying to be a bit more active on there even if you don't do any of those things, though, I still very much appreciate that you watched all the way through to this point. So thanks for watching.